tell me what book of the Bible we are reading in church at the moment? Genesis. Now that should have known the gabbets would be all over this. Okay, and what for a non-gabbet? Who is the person that we've been talking about? Jesus, sort of Jesus. Yep, jo- still Joseph. Jo- Joseph's dad, Jacob. Well done, Seamus. Okay, so can you just move back a bit because I think this is going a bit funny with the microphone. Okay, so we're learning about Jacob. Now, does anyone remember who Jacob's brother was? That was a few weeks ago. Esau. Esau. Well done, Seamus. Okay, so Jacob and Esau. So the point that we're looking at the story today is... Do you remember Jacob stole the blessing from Esau? So all the blessings from Abraham and Isaac are coming on to Jacob and his family. Jacob has been away for 20 years living with his uncle. He got married to four different people. He's had lots and lots of kids. And now he's going to come back into the land because God promised him. One of the promises that he made to Abraham was that he will have a land of his own and he will have lots of people and he'll be very rich and be a huge family and all the world will be blessed from him. So he's about to come back into the land, but Esau is still there. Now, have you ever argued with your brother or sister? Kind of is, yes, Noddy. But I'm sure you've argued with plenty of other people, Alice. Have you ever argued with a very good friend? Yes. So (laughs) let's not all go through who we've argued with. But So Jacob and Esau, they obviously... They were arguing because Jacob had stolen the promise from Esau and he'd gone off. And now he's got to come home 20 years later. And do you know what he does? He finds out that Esau is coming out to meet him with 400 people. And Jacob thinks, oh, my goodness, he's still angry with me. What is going to happen to me? Oh, my goodness. And what do you think he does when he feels very afraid? Um, He gives him gifts. Yes, that's right. He does. He tries to make Esau happy by sending him gifts. But what else do you think he does? Who can help him? God can help him. That's right. So what do you do if you need God's help? You pray. That's right. So we can learn from this story that Jacob, when he was frightened and he was worried, he prayed to God. And can he trust God that God would look after him? Yes. Yes. So what do you do if you trust God? If you pray about something and you trust God, what will you do next? What Do what God says, that's right. Will you keep worrying about what you were worried about? No, you don't have to worry about it anymore because you've asked God for his help. You know that he is the king of the whole entire universe. You don't have to keep worrying about it. He's promised you that he will look after you, just like he promised Jacob that he will look after him and give him the land. He's promised you that he will look after you. And he's promised you that he'll hear you when you talk to him. And he's promised you that you don't have to worry because God is on your team and your side. So we are going to do some things today to help us learn how to pray and what we can pray for. And I want you to remember that when you pray for these things, you can trust God that he has heard you and he will look after you. So Millie, come on up. So we've got some sheets that Millie and Alice have helped us with. So you've got some fine words. Got some spot the difference. There's your memory verse, which is a good thing to remember because that's what God promised Jacob that He would look after him. So Jacob prayed and didn't have to worry. But we've also got these two pages here, which we're going to make. We're going to do some crafts. So parents, you might just have to do a bit of assistance here. But um, we're going to cut out these cubes and we're going to stick them together. So you're going to cut them out. It look like this after you cut it out. And I want you to put a bit of glue on these bits here. And Millie, what will it look like when we stuck it together? It will look like a little cube. And on this are written things you can pray for. You can pray for people around the world. You can say, thank you, God, for. Say, I'm sorry for. That's a good thing to pray for. Say, I am worried about. And then you can pray about that. You can pray for someone special. Or you can pray for your family. But you might have a whole list of other things you want to pray for. So we've also given you a blank cube and you can write on them. Whatever you want to pray for. Maybe you've got lots of special friends that you want to pray that they'll come to church and know God too. Or maybe you know people who are sick and you just want to particularly pray for them. Or maybe there's something particular. So you can make your own where you can do this. So I want to see lots of cubes at the end of the day. Come up and show me the cube that you have made. Now the science girls will know how to do this and the communists will know how to do this because they did this at school. And it was so much fun and we use it so much that we're going to make more ones at church. 
So, Nilia Chen, I'm going to show you how you can play a game. You can throw it to each other. This is what we play at home. They catch it, and whatever you catch it on, that's what you're going to quickly pray to God about. Then you throw it back to Nilia, and oh, that's what she's going to pray about. Okay? So you can play a game with it, or you can just use it in your, in your bedroom at home, but these are good things to pray about. And I'm going to pray for you now before we go and make our prayer kids. Dear God, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you hear us when we pray. Thank you that Jake can pray to you when people are scared and that we can do that too. Thank you that you promised Jake lots of things and you promised us lots of things. And you always keep your promises. Please help us to know that in our hearts so that we can trust you with our whole lives. Amen. Amen. Amen.